After you download a rubber hose, you're going to drag the contents of the zip file into the script UI panels of the After Effects application folder. Load up After Effects and pull down the window menu and click rubber hose. Confirm that you did pay for it in the registration screen and go ahead and dock the panel wherever you want. We're going to skip most of the settings up here and focus on the new hose button. Click it and you'll be given two controllers and a hose layer. Drag the controllers around and the hose will bend and flex and stretch uh, based on what you do with it. And as you stretch it beyond its maximum length, it'll straighten out and the colors of the controllers will actually change. This is to let you know that you are stretching the hose and it's beyond its maximum length. A hose has a beginning and an end. You can think of it like an arm. The shoulder is the beginning of an arm that's pretty stationary connected to the body, and the wrist is what moves, and what you'll be animating. So the hose settings are located on the end of the hose, in this case the wrist. The first setting we're going to mess with is hose length. By adjusting it, you will add or remove material from the hose itself, causing it to bend more. Rubber hose doesn't use bones or anything like in traditional IK, so the method of bending actually comes from the length of the hose. The longer it is, the more it has to bend as the controllers get closer to one another. A hose's bend radius is customized by you. It can be as round as you want or as sharp as you want. And the interaction is still the same. You can move things around and it'll bend accordingly. You can even dial it into something custom in between sharp and round. Realism is a cryptic name for a slider that refers to the smoothness of a bend going from bent to straight. When you set it up to 100%, you start to notice a snapping happen. The term realism refers to the mathematical accuracy that is preserving the length of these two sections. In real life, the closer to straight you get, the more, the more it snaps into place. It usually works best to set it to somewhere in between 0 and 100, but it just depends on the effect you're trying to achieve. In traditional IK, a bend can only face one direction or the other, and there's no real easy way to go in between. But since we're not using traditional IK, you have full control over the direction it's going and all the space in between. This is really useful for perspective and direction changes. As you probably noticed by now, the controller ends will dynamically rotate based on the bend of the hose itself. This was designed specifically so that you could parent layers to the ends of a hose. So for this we're going to take the hand, parent it to the wrist, and zero out the position data. Just rotate it till it lines up accordingly. And grab a hold of the wrist and as we move it, the hand will rotate to match the bend of the hose. You can change the direction, you can move either end, you can change the bend radius to something sharp, and everything will rotate to be right. Hoses can be connected in the other direction too. So here we have a really simple character. We'll duplicate the foot to have two feet walking, and it's just a simple loop. What would be great is if we could connect a hose between the foot and the body. So we'll create a new hose. We'll drag the ankle controller to the foot where it ought to be, and we'll take the hip and we'll connect that. We'll place that on the body where it needs to be. Tighten up the hose length because that's the its furthest extension. And parent the hip to the body and parent the ankle to foot one. And go ahead and preview. And right away, we've got pretty decent motion. This can be fine-tuned to match whatever you're trying to achieve. These are the basics of rubber hose, so keep watching and we'll get a little bit deeper. Thanks.